Hello, everybody. Old Buck Dave back again with episode 114 of the Two Old Bucks. We just keep churning along here. I'm with here with me is none other than Old Buck Dell. That would be Old Buck Dell. Welcome. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to the coffee shop. Uh, good to talk to you. Likewise, likewise. So what's going on in your end of the world? Well, we're, this is kind of a monumental, uh, well, I don't know if you'd call it monumental, but it's a, it's a milestone for us because we always judge uh, after the first of the year when we start our countdown to another year and we kind of make that a joke. You know, once we hit January 1 or something, it's like, uh-oh. We did it. <laughs> we're we're going to be another year older. We didn't expect to even get yeah, this far. So. Yeah, these are all bonus years, baby. <laughs> yeah, so. After some of that stuff you did in high school. Well, and and a hundred other places too along the and way. And a hundred other uh, places. Yeah, well, there's, there's a, the ones we can't talk about. If you recall, <laughs> you keep telling me, well, we can't talk about that. You know, yeah, we don't want to talk about those things. Anyhow, we're 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 about to turn that uh, turn that number on the old speedometer up another notch. You know, yeah. the mileage. So we'll go from there. So the old, uh, the old planet's just completing another revolution. I really am excited about that. I have some good thoughts on some stuff. I, some, some, I have a lot of questions to ask you. Uh, you said you had a stump to buck thing. Why don't we, why don't we start with that? I have sort of one myself. We can try those two oh, things. You want me to go first with stump the buck? I do have a stump the buck. Yeah. Give me a stump the buck thing. All right. right. All right. We're going to do something different this time. Hmm. Um, because since you have mastered the other uh, oh, technique, yeah. I think you've gotten the last two or three in a row. So when you're just giving me a number and try to work it down to yeah. what it meant. So. Uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're getting smarter, I guess, in your old age. So what, this is carrying on the machine poem, the uh, artificial intelligence thought. Um, what I've done is I've taken excerpts from two poems, two prose poems written by humans, real people. And then I've created another uh, excerpt, a, a prose poem. The machine has created it. I just said, write a poem about something. Okay. So mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to read these three and I'm going to ask you to guess which one is the machine. Okay. Okay. Now let me be clear. The, okay. Be, I'll be clear. Go ahead. The, the topic, the topic that you gave the artificial intelligence, which I told you you'd become addicted to, uh, mm -hmm. Is, is it the same topic that the other two poems generally refer to? Well, they're close. They're close. Okay. They're okay, close. So I'm just listening for, so it's not generally, um, doesn't have to be about like a car or something. It's, uh, it's just three poems and, yeah, and you're kinda, asking me to pick the one. I'm going to yeah. pick the one that I think was written by yeah. the, the few first few lines are written yeah, by and the, the general, artificial intelligence. Yeah. The general theme I was looking for was, uh, you know, people in the city. Okay. Right. Let's go. So here's number one. Along the perimeter of a busy compound on a sidewalk in front of a high black iron fence, two women are standing in a drizzle without umbrellas. Early fall before trees turn, with the stubborn warmth of summer holding off cooler weather. They are facing each other, one with head bowed, reading something to herself on her cell phone, the other watching her read. Okay, that's the first excerpt. That's that's item A. That's okay. We'll call that item A. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's then this will be B. Two lovers are walking through the city, exploring all its splendors at the crack of dawn. They feel captivated by the towering buildings that glimmer in the faint sunlight, suddenly stretching up to touch the sky. The streets are still quiet and vibrant, and the lovers are enthralled. Time passes, and the sun rises above the horizon as if it were just a tease to the couple's day to explore the city. The city slowly awakes. Okay. okay. That was number two. That was B. Excuse me. That was B. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here comes C. Even if unconsciously the city's inhabitants had been glad of the holes, empty slots between buildings, empty lots on corners where here a handsome bar there an impromptu park had been wedged between brick walls or the green grass had just been left to expand unchecked. Okay. That was C. Okay, those are the, those are the three, those are the three excerpts. And one was generated by, generated by a artificial that, intelligence that computer chat, thing that you've been playing with. So. That chat APT thing. Or yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, 
the our listeners i'm going to give our listeners a chance to think (laughs) sorry i'm going to give our listeners a chance to ponder this themselves and some of my logic is there there are things that humans uh, can describe quite accurately you know what i mean Mm -hmm. There there are just certain things so um listening to that i'm going to say that that before was you my, say it, before you say it, no, I'm going to give you some uh, criteria. Okay. Well, we want the, we want the listeners to uh, make their guesses also, and you can send them in to us. And oh, we, we, we presume so you'll we be honest. We, we'll we'll we presume. You, all right, we can answer this in the next episode. Then, no, no, no. We to. can do we can do it now. We can do it now. Okay. But we're we're leaning on honesty here. Okay. So what I'm thinking about is is that if uh, if I was to um, you know maybe read something from the New Yorker has has they have the talent to do stuff like this Mm -hmm. and the i'm looking at what someone may observe so i'm thinking that the the two that were written by people were a and c and i believe b was written by artificial intelligence okay let's ready for a drum roll here you are correct (laughs) sir you are correct very good very good it, but you uh, you see where i'm coming from on that don't you talk, i mean you talk, see talk to me some more what what was your you know, what was the no, deciding the, factor or factors well that little bit of the uh, excerpts we had the other day this the ai is programmed to be pretty clever let's face it it's, mm-hmm. it's uh, pretty clever but uh the uh unless you're i'm saying unless you have some people really on the ground there uh they would pick up something observed by two people and the cast the cast iron fence immediately said i said that's got to be um, i don't think they would think that as a computer but mm-hmm. two people two people would be standing there they would be looking at what they were around so i was using that criteria so a uh, couple with a little bit of logic um and my i have mi you know marginal intelligence i would say <laughs> marginal intelligence <laughs> Uh, Am I? That, that was a like guess. and a little bit of guesswork there. I'm, I'm guessing. Anyhow, I'm glad I made that one. So you did. You, you did well, man. The string continues just okay. just to make you feel even better. <laughs> I, I already gave this quiz to two two people I know. They're both writers. Mm-hmm. Okay, and one got it right and one didn't. So well, that's uh, well, whatever their criteria was. So so. So, here, I'm sorry. Let me ask ahead. you. Let me ask you a question, and let me give you a uh, uh, stump the buck question. Okay. Well, let me finish then before oh, you okay, stump, just, try to stop me. I was mm-hmm. just going to say I'll put a link to the uh, place where the two real poems came from. Uh, the first one was is is called uh, "Human Being" by Joshua Weiner, and the uh, last one was called "The Ruins of Nostalgia 26" by Donna Stone Cipher. And they were, they're both in a uh, literary or, you know, literary journal. And uh, so we'll put a link to that. So if people want to read the the full poems or any other poems. So, it's... so, but your question to the AI was, tell me a story about two people in the city. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. that simple. Uh, I knew you would, uh, you would find this intriguing. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I said to people in the city. I didn't specify the number two. Anyway, well, so yeah. Let me ask you this. All right, um, ask me. Who, uh, who or what are the fabulous hubcaps? I'll give you some choices. The fabulous hubcaps. Mm-hmm. Okay, give me some right, choices. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you. Uh, this is like a multiple choice. This is going to be multiple choice. Okay. Okay. A. Can... Is it a circus clown group? B. Is it a '50s doo-wop band? I'm leaning towards B already. C, is it a collection of uh, franchise collision repair shops? Mm. D, is it an actual hub cup, a hubcap shop? <laughs> there are such things. And E, e oh, there's a lot is, of choices it is, now. It is, it is a museum art display of car hubcaps. So which one is it? Well, I was going strong towards B there, but uh, now you got me confused. Too many choices. So I'm going to have to go with E. <laughs> hubcap museum no you were right you were right on your first choice ah stick with stick, you stick with your I gut feeling this. i know why i did this dave i don't know what made me think of this you want to mess with me yeah no i had a uh i had a cd by this group 
and you really? can put yeah okay. you can, anybody can google this fabulous uh the fabulous hubcaps but have you ever heard of them before did you ever hear them no no i have not that's what i was thinking that a lot of people wouldn't and here's why i mentioned it on a podcast is they're a um they're a, a collection of of excellent uh musicians that uh, have members come and go depending on their skill and ability i think mm -hmm. um they do a 50s 60s 70s uh you know reminiscent kind of songs okay you know, sing sing the songs of that era uh -huh. and they are fantastic the fabulous hubcaps are actually a fantastic and you, you they're generally at a maybe yeah maybe they'll be at a state fair or something or they'll be at a uh um, a club or some group or something will hire them to do that, but they put on a fantastic show. So I'm only telling uh, our audience that if, if they ever see an advertisement and, and, and they say, uh, and we're featuring the fabulous hubcaps, mm -hmm. buy, buy a ticket and go see them. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you're from our crowd, you know, if you're from the over the over 60 crowd, uh, they, uh, they really good. They're really good. Almost as good as the original performers. I mean, they're that, they're that excellent. So that's what and, and if you should hear them, listen to them while you're in your car, flash your headlights, right? <laughs> yeah, flash your lights. Flash your lights. Yeah, the fabulous. Yeah, I, the fabulous I do not know cast. what made me look that up, but I remember what well, the, there, no, the no, CD no, I had. Nobody knows how you're wired the way you right. are. <clears throat> hey, well, I do have a story for you. Uh, I have some other questions. I have another question for you. So I, you did get that right. Well, kind of right. That was my gut feeling, but. All right, I'll, I'll take at least half credit on that. Are you ready for me to pour my uh, pour my brain out, my soul out to you? This is a you're not going to you're not going to do this in front of a mirror, are you? No. Okay. No, but you can picture this. Uh, you can picture this. I would have both hands on the table. You know, we were sitting. The, we're in a coffee shop. We're sitting across from each other by a matter. You know, inches away. You know, thirty six inches away. Mm -hmm. And I've got both hands on my cup. Oh, and good. I'm, I'm not, looking, not on, not on your breasts. Yeah. Okay. And I'm oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm looking straight at you. So uh -huh. My question is you, my question to you is this, do you, do you have any stamps in your house? I do. Stamps. Um, who is responsible for, for purchasing the stamps? I'm generally assigned to purchase the stamps. Okay. So you have the stamps. She, my wife is the one who knows when we need stamps. Uh, okay. okay she's, so she's, she's, she's the, the organized person she's the organized person who who in the has duo. the actual control of them where she who puts them in the drawer who sets them where they where they are oh she hides them once i give them to her then uh, she hides uh, them makes okay. me grovel for them anytime i need one <laughs> hey, i'm not I, making I, this up no i'm not making this up either <laughs> that's why i'm asking you because this is i mean people listen to me now because uh you'll you'll know what i'm talking about okay so you you may purchase them, but you hand them to your wife. As, mm -hmm. I don't even purchase them. I just know that my wife has them because they she just show them. up. Huh? Okay. And then, and what do we do when we need one? We have to say, where where are, are, the, are the stamps? stamps? Yep, yep. And mostly, um, in my case, my wife would say they are in the same drawer. I always keep them in, and I said I've just looked in there and I cannot <laughs> find them. See, my wife would say, "Why do you want to know that?" <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so everybody can relate to that portion. There's somebody, yeah, yep. somebody's responsible for keeping track of that item in, in your household. Okay, okay, true. This is now, correct. Do you have a sewing machine? We do. You do. Do you know where the instructions are on how to use it? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> what? No. Okay. No. My wife, a, my yes. wife is all right. My wife is a sewing wizard. Okay. Okay. So you don't even have to ask for that because she will she will thread it for you. Thread. She, right. If you was ever going to use it, but you would. If I were going to use in it, in your case, you don't even you trust in that entire process to your wife because she knows where the machine is. She knows how to put it she together. Knows she knows how to use how to it. She knows how to use it. Can do all so, that stuff, so that yeah. isn't on, that isn't on your radar. Now, in my case, my sewing machine is my machine. Oh, uh, my wife really doesn't use it. Mm -hmm. And when it sits for several years, I forget you, how to thread it. You forget. <laughs> uh, is anybody out there ringing a the bell? The light going on in some people's, 
I forget how to, I forget how does that thread go through there? You know, there's a certain pattern at that. And in the directions is the a sample of that. It shows a picture of that, how to do it. So uh, several times I wanted to sew something. I couldn't remember how to thread it. And I started looking for the instructions. For the manual, okay. Okay, now this mm -hmm. is what happens after that happens. And you can tell me if this applies to you. So I'm starting to dig through the usual places where a set of a booklet would be. And while I'm in that process, and this, this hunting process, I'm discovering other things. Like, oh, look, there's an old picture of me and Dave someplace. Uh, mm -hmm. So... <laughs> So I've got, I'm adding more and more time to my, my hunting process. For you're the down the rabbit hole now. Buddy. Right. I'm done. Yeah. So you're going through these drawers and flipping through stuff and you're thinking, I don't know why am I keeping this? And so yeah. it sets you off on a wild goose chase, in which case I did not find it. And did you, did you did still remember that's what you were looking for though? Well, you get distracted. No, I stayed focused on it, but okay. I didn't find it at that hunt, on that hunt. On that hunt. <laughs> so I gave up. I'm making a point here. I'm going to tell you that my, I'm um, leading up to a story. I, I believe you. So I did not find it. And I said, okay, now what's the next scenario after that? When you're looking for a shovel <laughs> or some bizarre thing that you don't know where it's at. And what do you run across in your old file under a pile of books? You find the sewing machine instruction, find a sewing machine instruction. At that point, you say to yourself, I'm going to put this someplace that I can find it. Okay. Now, my, my question comes in. I need to know from our listeners, you, anybody, the strategy that you need to have to put things away like small tools, um, tiny little Allen screws for, say, faucets, because most people, most people outlive at least one, one pet and three faucets, you know, in their lifetime. <laughs> yeah. So I have a faucet that I need to take a part to check something on the stem and that little Allen wrench, the size of a needle, a little bigger than a big needle is somewhere in the house. What is the strategy you use to put things someplace that you expect to look for sometime in the near future, like two years later or three years later? I mean, when you put your Ikea furniture together, there's a tool. You think I'll just set this mm -hmm. aside in case I have to fix this. So mm -hmm. my question to you, is what is your logic and where do you put those things so you can find them well ikea is different than a lot of the other things actually because I'm put just I, giving, giving I, I put ikea stuff together and in fact the, i mean the last thing i put together was an ikea bed mm -hmm. and, and i kept the in, uh, instructions under the bed okay. <laughs> okay. logical logical place to put okay, okay. but uh, yeah i mean a lot of stuff i'll just throw in the, in the tool drawer but actually some like tools that I've things that I'll use often, I mm -hmm. sprinkle, I sprinkle duplicates around the house. So, <laughs> I, but, well, where is that thing? And I, you know, you mean I, like your Phillips screwdriver, you got yes, at least six. I've, of those I've got them in six different places. Yes. That's so my, you, you don't have a strategy. What do you do with uh, like this tiny little Allen wrench? I'm saying that it takes your faucet apart. I, I told you one time I went to replace say, an aerator in a faucet. Yeah. I remember and that. I, I beat that thing apart and, and I, and I spent, I had to use a micrometer to get the opening of it. And it turns out that there's a little key. There's mm -hmm. actually a little key that fits that and it screws out so simply and you put the new one in a matter of seconds. Anyhow, I didn't have that key. So I'm hunting now for a little tiny Allen wrench. Couldn't be much more than two millimeter, mm -hmm. three millimeter max. It's an SAE Allen wrench, not a millimeter, but mm -hmm. cause I have millimeters. I'm hunting and I'm hunting. I'm looking through the nuts and bolts drawer. I'm looking through the tool pile. I'm looking through the junk drawer. I'm looking through all the stuff. And I'm thinking, where would I, why did I forget where I put this? I mean, at the time, it seemed so perfectly mm -hmm. that I would remember this. Now, is it because of age this is happening? Or I'm just not, I don't have a plan to put it in the right place. <laughs> Whatever it is, I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> so so, oh, so yeah. others may be suffering from the same problem. Where did I put that? The same malady. Where did I put that? Oh, yeah. 
Now, well, I'm, I've got good news. I've okay. got good news. You have a solution. You have a strategy. No, now. I did not. I wasn't successful on the first hunt. I, I, again, I failed. It was in, in the, the sewing machine. Right? And again, I did. I fell into the same category. I started going through these drawers where I throw all this stuff in there. And then I started picking all the pieces out, all the empty plastic bags that I throw in there that I emptied them and why I left them in there. So I spent a couple hours cleaning up again and thinning out the drunk drawers uh, nuts and bolts uh, drawer the and i was like three other drawers full of yeah i do that once a decade <laughs> when you move houses you end yeah. up putting them in boxes yeah. and carrying them with you yep. so i did that and i did not find it i did not find it so i was troubled by this little uh, squeaky faucet it is troubling mm -hmm. you know how i am about stuff like that i know I'm how you are about, about stuff it. like that yeah i gotta get it fixed so i think and where would i put something small then I'm thinking the only place I have not looked is in my watch. I have a watch, watch box. tools. Oh yeah. Yeah. The watch tools, watch mm -hmm. box, small little screws and all kind of bits and pieces of watches that I've taken over the years and saving the stems and things. So I said, I'll bet it's in there. So I went through that and sure enough in the corner, I find the right wrench and I take it apart and I realize and there's nothing I can do with this stem. It's just, it's just going to have to squeak. It's so going to have to. All the effort I put into that was for naught. I just put it back together and said, okay, well, not, the only way to repair this squeak is to buy a new faucet. And that will be like the fourth faucet I lived, outlived. And so, so this, is, this is your retirement. No, this is, this is my invitation <laughs> to all the, all the oh, okay. old bucks out there and a the vivacious vixen. If you have a special logic that you use to put things away that you hope to find sometime in the future for future use, whether it's a, you know, whether it's a, not a uh, instruction manual uh, and, or a tool or something like that, that you think you'll need again, tell me what it is. Because, you know, I've got uh, instruction manuals for old blood pressure machines that I've thrown away so years ago. You've already ago. thrown away. Yeah. Yep. Oh yes. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. So Isn't anyhow, there... that's that's my story on uh, on how to resolve the, uh, the, you know, putting a tool away or something. Isn't there a woman who's fun. gotten rich helping people like you? I don't know. Yes, Maybe somebody of Marie with... Marie Kondo or Kendo. <laughs> she writes all this stuff on organizing your house. I think you need to talk to Marie. I think that's her name. Marie. I think I told you my house is organized. I'd put everything on the wall that I need immediately. You just can't yeah. find it. Yeah, you just I can't only find have, anything. I only have four knives and four spoons i don't even have extra of anything i mean okay and i just can't find this stuff but again my wife is not involved in that so she might be more organized maybe if i gave her this stuff and ask her at some time in the future <laughs> okay let me know how that goes. you know that you know that little uh, you know two millimeter wrench i gave you uh, yeah, 12 years how... ago dear what did you do with that where did you yeah. put that so let me know how that upward delegation works for you <laughs> But you personally, you sound like you don't have a strategy. You're just a hunt and peck like myself. You just yeah, go all over the place. Anyway, yeah, so. yeah. I mean, I think I have a story. I'll put this, it's, you know, it's like the same with passwords. You know, like, oh, yeah, I remember this. You don't. Okay. Anyway, that's, that's maybe the, maybe somebody will send a system. That's in. old bugs. They'll we'll, uh, we'll post it. Lament there. So That's your lament. Mm. Any letters from afar, by the way? Uh, actually, we've got a couple letters from afar. Speaking of lament. Um, We've got, we got, uh, I'm not going to read them out, but uh, okay, we've got three different listeners basically essentially reporting nightmares and in, in envisioning you clutching your breasts in front of the mirror. Well, so, they, they were pecs. They were pecs once. Now they probably would qualify. Come as, on. Come on. I think they would qualify as breasts. Yeah, that's gravity for you. Just, I don't know what to do. I, you know, never thought it you, would happen to me. You remember that Seinfeld episode? Where, oh, uh, yeah. The man's ear. The man's ear. <laughs> Maybe that's the solution. I don't know. But uh, yeah, that, that one's burned into my brain here. I, you, you scared a few people with Those that guys one. were way ahead of their time when it came they to They were way ahead of their time. They? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. But yeah, that's pretty much it as far as uh, letters from afar. I, I may have sent you a couple more, but I, I, I've been unorganized today. It's like looking for an Allen key. Well, I know that Spramley Elon, room. our buddy Elon, is looking for a new. CEO. He's got an opening. Yeah, he's got an opening, and uh, you apply. I, I can't even. I can't even imagine what the, what that job would entail. I mean, he might as well have uh, artificial intelligence or anybody. You know, just pick the janitor or somebody. Say, listen, you're, 
you're now in charge. You just do what I tell you. And, yeah, and the janitor yeah. could take all the heat. I don't no, think I don't think Elon's really. ever going to let control of that go. He he loves that. And that's wow. his thing. So we shall see. We shall see. You see his uh, his uh, the Twitter people voted that he 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 put it out on Twitter. He said, "Should I resign as CEO?" And like, oh well, sixty percent of them said yes. So I think he makes those. Uh, I think he makes those things up. He might. That's a good. He might. He might. Yeah, I believe that. I mean, who 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 would know? Who's who's if he's counting the ballots, he could make anything up. He's oh, seventy percent said I should stay. Who knows? We got time for a couple shout outs. We do have time for some shout outs. Um, shout out away. Uh, you know, as uh, time goes by uh, around this time of year, I like to, I generally try to call a few people on my, in my log. Some of them aren't in even my phone. They're just in a book someplace that I have them written down. I'll, that you I'll can't find. Back. Well, I know where they are. I just have to go down that list and I'll see their name. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I call them once a year, sort of as a, as a, as a time marker mm -hmm. and okay. uh that's fair a couple people are no longer uh available to call number one and a couple people no longer remember me you know number yep. two yeah um so the uh enough time has passed that uh, uh i did talk to him while i could and uh we you know we encourage that we've always encouraged that from our first episode that if you have an old friend uh Give him a shot, even if it's a brief hello. I want to shout out to my an old friend, uh, old Matarats, uh, Joe Matarats, and in, uh, in Georgia, uh, I call him uh, once a year, and uh, he's getting older, and um, and just a great guy. And I, so I made a few of those calls and got through to quite a few people. Like I said, several, a uh, couple didn't, uh, wasn't able to do that anymore, and um, I so shout out to him and. Uh, and uh, vivacious vixen number one. Number one. Oh. I haven't haven't heard from her. Uh, just a uh, a saint, a true saint. Uh, well, she uh, did. Of, she she did a send a note about uh, you and your uh, COVID bout. Yeah, that would be. You recall uh, uh, that would be her she's caring nature. She's thinking about you. Yeah. yeah. After all those years, she's just a generally caring person. So big shout out to her and and all that she's dealing with and her family. Um, and a few other listeners out there, uh, they know who they are. We care about them all. Uh, and this is a time of year. I encourage everybody to make that call, you know, just go ahead yep. and do that one yep. time. Won't hurt or send that card. That sometimes helps to get a little card from out of, yeah. out of the hey, blue. Well, so, okay. Hey, well, listen, while we're doing this, you, you triggered something. I've been carrying this around for a couple of weeks here, trying to decide whether I wanted to actually say it or not, but you talked about the, the ones we can't call anymore. Hmm. I would just like to recognize, uh, I'll recognize, uh, just mention that my, my cousin Pat died a few weeks ago of a brain aneurysm. Suddenly? Uh, yes. Yeah, suddenly. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, sad, I'm kind of been ang ang anguished over whether to mention it, but I just want to recognize her, someone I knew, someone I was related to. You know, she's somebody who wasn't famous, but she was just a fine person. Um, she was a year to, I think a year younger than I was. And uh, she grew up in the Mon Valley, Pennsylvania. And she was very studious as a child. So we used to play brain games when we get together. So she was, she was really a bright, bright gal. And, um, you know, we, I can't say we were really close, but we got to know each other better as we got older. And she had kind of a story back book romance. I mean, she went to Rome on a holiday on vacation. She met Gino, a Roman guy, a banker. They they married eventually. Oh. Yeah. And they lived in Rome for a number of years. And we visited them. I think it was 71. Pat introduced me to Cappuccino long, long before anybody ever heard of it in the U.S., man. It's like, wow, this stuff is great. That was one of the things I just I just remember. And uh, they t she took us, uh, she and Gino took us to a neighborhood political rally where the guy's standing on the car, you know, like they have elections like every other week in Italy, you know, it was great. Mm. And then these guys uh, in the crowd there, so we were English and they're practicing their English on me. It was, it was great. And uh, we went to a, uh, the Italy Brazil soccer match. This was a, uh, this was a kind of a, a, uh, 
kind of a repeat of the uh, World Cup the previous year. And, and uh, you know, while I was not, you know, a huge soccer fan, I could understand by just how you got swept up in the whole thing. So you were doing this with her in Italy? In Italy, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, they took us oh, to the wow. Mediterranean, the beach one day, and you know, introduced us to new foods, calamari, and all kind of grilled seafood. That no, was great. Well, she worked at Arthur Anderson most of her career, both you know, both in Italy, in Italy, and then when they they came back to the U.S. and um, and relocated to uh, Portland, Oregon, in '93, uh, I believe, and and opened an Italian restaurant. Oh wow! Yeah, now Gino passed away in 2007. Uh, great guy, but the family still has the restaurant. Uh, she had lots of grandchildren. She was loved by all, and they uh, the, the really kind of thing that uh, bothers me is we had just reestablished an email relationship a few weeks prior. Uh, we, you know, we'd send each other a note once a year or something, but we were swapping. Oh, you know, remember this, remember that. And we need to get together here sometime. And, uh, you know, we can't do that. So we miss you, Pat. You're, you were sweetie. Cousin Pat. Yeah, I do know what you mean. Uh, some, some cousins that uh, thankfully are still around, uh, if something did happen to them, uh, I would, I would feel it. You know what I mean? Cause yep. I knew them. Yep. I knew them. And, and what, what's that, uh, that one saying that I, I probably repeated in many broadcasts was the last man that passes away that knew me as a boy. Oh yeah. Yeah. That one always chokes me up a bit. Yeah. Knew me as a boy, because you know how that is. You know, a lot of people, many, many people we meet along the way, but not very many people know you as a boy and that would be me <laughs> yeah that would be me so yeah all right well you know i hope the uh listeners uh, uh t take heed to that uh we we feel strongly about that and uh thanks thanks for bringing that up Dave. yeah well maybe uh, maybe it's time to uh, to wrap it up here today uh wish a happy holiday season to to you certainly and to everybody listening uh, merry christmas happy hanukkah Happy Kwanzaa. Yeah, if you're going back to Seinfeld, happy Festivus. Yeah, for, yeah. for those listeners who believe in that. Huh? So, yeah, yeah. So, we well, you know, of, you know, speaking of stuff like that, I mean, I would like to say to all the listeners, uh, certainly have a, uh, you know, a Merry Christmas and a, and a happy holiday. But I also like to encourage that, that they, they do this without any drama or trauma. You know what I mean? This time of year, the folks may be in the snow belts or something, listen yeah. to us. Yeah. I mean, I hope your car doesn't get stuck. I hope you make it to the dinner on time. Yeah. I hope you don't drop a cutting board on your toe. Because <laughs> there's a lot of activity, a lot of group activity this time of year. And uh, I hope there's an, a, no discussion that anybody uh, gets upset about whether or not to have cranberry sauce with this or that and uh, anything else like that. So that's my wish for everybody, that they move around safely, that, uh, you know, they just get through these holidays and things tend to slow down a little bit. Of course, the drama and trauma still come up, but it's, it's, it's really hopefully unnecessary at this time of year. You don't, you don't want to add that in. And all those people stranded at the airport that might oh, be listening boy. to us. Yeah. <laughs> Curse, <laughs> about those folks. Yeah. So anyhow, uh, that's my wish for everybody. And uh, certainly this is old Buck Dell saying, thank you so much. We're, uh, this is a milestone for us when we get to this, uh, this date. And like I said, we, we start our, countdown for our next uh, mile marker getting and, close uh, getting close yeah, yeah and we'll carry on as long as we got the production staff of uh dave 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 and dave <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're, they're, they're getting older i ho hope they stick around all right, all right. Well, buck dale saying thank you very much oh buck dave right here right behind you take care everybody have a good one bye-bye <laughs>